in my reaction to the younger people's action, reaction to this up there, could we maybe get a, a clue as to what within the body turns the human system on and off with regard to immunity? Hopefully we can find ways maybe to uh, make it possible for younger astronauts to go on longer missions without having some of the problems they have and at the same time cut out some of the frailties of old age for people here on Earth. Endeavor. We've got Unity firmly attached to Endeavor and we're off to a great start on building the International Space Station. Houston Endeavor, we have capture of Zarya. Physical separation, executing set burn. Initial contact, initial contact of the Soyuz capsule with the Expedition 1 crew to the International Space Station. The hatch was opened at 102140 uh, Universal Time. The uh, first expedition on Space Station uh, requests permission to take the radio call sign Alpha. We are on a true spaceship now, making our way above any earthly boundary that our crews can work together as equals and our countries as partners so all the other vehicles we had ever built uh, could be totally assembled put together and tested on the ground before you launched them into space the space station is so large you know it's 360 feet wide 280 feet long 120 feet thick or something like that it weighs a million pounds and it takes uh, 46 or 47 assembly flights just to take up all the pieces. So every time you brought up a new piece, you had a different spacecraft that had a different set of requirements and basically a, a new spacecraft. And at each stage, it has to operate uh, completely successfully for uh, an extended period of time. Even as the International Space Station was being assembled in orbit, Spirit and opportunity would soon rove the Martian landscape. But early in this new millennium, we would endure a tragic reminder of the dangers of space travel. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages, and we did not copy your last. Roger. At 9 o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. A short time later, debris was seen falling from the skies above Texas. The Columbia is lost. There are no survivors. NASA has been charged with advancing the uh, technology and understanding of spaceflight for this country, which means we're on the cutting edge of what can be done. Then we're going to be taking risks and spaceflight is one of the areas where we face risk on a daily basis. And in the process of doing this, we develop the new technologies, new techniques, the new inventions, we make discovery. This is what's going to keep us powerful and safe and secure and assure the economic vitality of our nation. One, two, three. We actually put our many years of hypersonic research here at Langley into, into work, into a vehicle that actually flew with the HyperX program, which was indeed an exciting, exciting program. This was put on a Pegasus booster, taken up to test point, and then released. Three, two, one, launch, launch, Sequence launch. Sequence reset. At that point, the X-43 would ignite. We had two vehicles, Mach 7, and then we had a Mach 10 vehicle. We broke our own record. Mach 7 was the first record breaker, and then we broke our own record with a Mach 10 as far as speed.
I had a great time working on airplanes and fighters and, and stuff. The agency not only built and flew some very cool things, we also had a lot of research that then got on to other airplanes. We did a lot of work at, that, you know, ultimately led to things that are on the F-22 and, and F-117 and, and maybe on the Joint Strike Fighter. We don't build 747s and we don't build F-22s, but we certainly did things that help the companies that do build those kind of flight vehicles make their airplanes better. Play with a good maneuver. Three, two, main engine start, zero, and liftoff of the Delta rocket with opportunity. A chance to explore and unlock the secrets of our neighboring planet. The reason we send unmanned spacecraft is to pave the way for humans. The reason we've got spirit and opportunity on Mars is to tell us a little bit about what it's going to be like, the things we're going to encounter when we get there. Because it's man's intellect, it's man's intelligence that you can never recreate this computer. We intentionally made them so human. We gave them 20-20 vision. We gave them the ability to move around in an environment. We gave them an arm so that they could reach out and touch things. And then we used them to do exactly what we would do if we were there. One thing that NASA gives us is, is a, a very different perspective on the whole universe, including our own world, our own world's place in it. Um, when we look at other worlds and we look through the eyes of a robot at a frozen desert, we appreciate our own world so much more because we see what it could be like. When they die, it will be sad, but they will have led such long and productive lives and will have died honorable deaths that I'll be at peace with it because of what they've done. These are machines after all. But you feel an emotional attachment. We've put so much of ourselves into these things that when we lose them, we'll lose a part of ourselves. It'll be hard. I'll really miss them. Ten seconds, go for main engine start. Seven, six, five, three engines up and burning. Three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery, beginning America's new journey to the moon, Mars, and beyond. When you approached the space station, it actually felt like it was enveloping you as you got close to it because the size of it was so immense, you could hardly take it in in all the windows or your peripheral vision. And it seemed like it, you were flying into a canyon, like in Star Wars almost, and it, it totally surrounded you. But uh, it's a wonderful feeling to, uh, to see the space station coming up, and it's being framed by the, the Earth below. Uh, very beautiful uh, views trying to distract you from your task of, of flying the space shuttle. When you arrive on the International Space Station, um, you know, there's a little bit of a shock factor. It was very odd when they closed the hatch and we weren't on that shuttle. You saw them flying away and it was like, wow, we're really here. Man, this is going to be a long visit. We get scheduled for approximately two hours of exercise a day, and that's to try and counteract some of the uh, negative effects of being in zero gravity on the uh, musculoskeletal system and our cardiovascular system. So that was uh, uh, an important aspect of every day that we're on board the station. The crew members themselves are laboratory rats, as, if you will, you know, because we have a human research program trying to understand what happens to people when they're in space for long periods of time, and so we participate in those experiments. Obviously, I also think the space station offers a, an incredible uh, laboratory. Uh, we've added additional laboratory modules during Expedition 16 and with the most recent addition on the last shuttle flight. Um, so it's going to be, I think, a spectacular laboratory as well, and I'm excited about what the future holds for us there. Uh, this is the command post. We have both an American laptop and a Russian laptop there. Probably the biggest legacy of the International Space Station, I think, will be the International.